Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on with our Dual Primals team that we started off with at the beginning of this week. So as you can see, the team is on your screen. As always, there is a roll paste and a poker paste in the description for you to check out and try out if you would like to. We've made a few adjustments from the past couple of episodes on the team, just minor ones, because the big big changes I think we'll take into next week and we'll really revamp the team over the weekend, come back with it and make some uh, big adjustments and hopefully improvements to uh, make this team just kick on a bit further. So the tiny adjustments that we've made, we had dual Z-move, which was a little bit conflicting in our past couple of episodes. We've taken the Z-move off Coco, we've just got it on the Incineroar now, uh, we've taken uh, safety goggles off Stack Attacker give it focus sash and then obviously the life orb uh, we've put on to Coco there so they're the only changes we've made we'll see how we get on with those today and uh, before we get into it I'll just apologize and say as you know from the past couple of episodes I've not been feeling very well and I've yeah been hit like a truck and feeling really grotty is the word to uh, <laughs> encapsulate the whole feeling today. So, um, yeah, not feeling great. And hopefully the nasal, the nasal voice doesn't get too irritating, but I will try my best um, to get through this. We'll look for our first opponent. As always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. It does indicate that you are enjoying this content, especially for myself. Uh, do subscribe to the channel so you get and don't miss any more future Pokemon content that we will be doing and there will be a boatload and uh, more importantly leave your comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the team what you'd like to see going forward in the Ultra series and just anything in general that you'd like to talk about because I love hearing from you and uh, don't feel too bad if I don't get back to you straight away sometimes I just don't have the time to get back uh, and reply even though I do appreciate each and every one of your comments and I do read them all so thank you so much for everyone that does comment but we have our first opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight into it. It's an interesting call. Rayquaza, Ivaltal, not something that you see uh, too often. And is that a Dendene? I'm pretty sure it is. With Tapu Fini, Landorus Therian, and Ferrothorn. So, very interesting call. Tapu Koko feels like it can do a, a great job here. Um, not really sure what the Dendene is doing. Um, but, yeah, Tapu Koko just does so much work. You've got to watch out for the Landorus, of course. Um, but other than that, we're kind of hitting most things for good damage. So, Coco, Maloko. I don't know if I want to bring it to lead with, though. It's, I mean, it's a nice pivot switch out, isn't it? Um, speed control on my opponent's team there. You're looking at uh, Tailwind over anything else. There's no Trick Room setter. If Trick Room goes up, Ferrothorn's going to be a bit awkward to deal with. But Landorus doesn't do too bad. I mean, I could potentially go Coco Stacks, Kyogre Groudon. Salamence is very nice here, to be honest. Um, might go that. I might go Salamence, Coco, Kyogre, Groudon. We're not bringing our Trick Room mod, but I think we could probably get around not needing it here. Um, and it takes away Ferrothorn. Has been a bit of a pain if we do get the trick room up. I mean, Ferrothorn's a lot easier to deal with than something like Amoongus um, because it hasn't got access to that sleep that Amoongus has. So we'll see how we get on today. My head feels so fuzzy though. You know, when you just got like fuzzy head and it's just, uh, I don't know, even think I'm thinking straight. The quality of uh, my performance on the channel this week is going to be top notch so <laughs> I will apologize for it in advance we're gonna see Veltal and Dendene come up for my opponent I'm really intrigued to see what this Dendene does it's probably got that I don't even know it's move pool to be honest it's one of those Pokemon that I've not really looked at too closely it feels like it's gonna have stuff like um, Nuzzle and definitely something like Super Fang I would imagine I'm gonna switch Salamence out oh do I I don't think Dendene gets Tailwind. Uh, fake out. What am I talking about? We could Tailwind here and just Volt Switch out on the Evaltal. It definitely doesn't get Lightning Rod. I know that. So we can get some decent damage onto the Evaltal here with Coco. Dendene going to switch straight out. We're going to see Tapu Fini hit the field. That's nice. We see a Misty Seed maybe activate on the Evaltal. 
One of my favourite items. Uh, no. So there's the. We'll probably just match tailwinds here. Got to watch out for this, Finny, though. That I think because um, with the Rayquaza, it's not going to be like super safe to keep our ground on on the field. Ooh, is that weakness policy? Damn. No. Well, that thing's going to be hitting like a truck now. Plus two, plus two. Uh, we've got to watch out for the sucker punches then. But we'll bring Kyogre in. I think it's maybe the better option now than the, the Groudon. Just for the reason with that Finny. And the Rayquaza lurking probably in the back. Because um, we don't want to get like just hit with a, a random Scald. And Groudon taking out the game before it's able to do anything. It's going to be so useful against something like Ferrothorn. If that is in the back. I doubt it is though really. There's our Tailwind. And we'll see what this Eveltal is going to do. It would have been better going for a Thunderbolt really wouldn't we? Snarl. Kyogre voids, yay! Okay, that helps us out massively. Damn, that does so much damage. So much damage. Uh, do we risk the sucker punch? That's the thing. Um, I could just double edge the finny and the water spout. Oh, ice beam. Ice beam's probably a bit more reliable into the Veltal. Yeah, and just double edge. And if Salamence goes down here, that's fine. Uh, we're going to see Veltal just protect this turn. We're going to see the Finny do. Get a nice chunk of damage there, so it will go down the next turn. Um, the Veltal may not have Sucker Punch. Grass Knot. What? There's respectable damage. Grass Knot Finny. Haven't seen that before. Um, we'll go for the, the same again. Ice Beam and... The double edge. Grass not finny. We could have um oh Ray's popping in. Okay. We're gonna see a sucker punch here. Sucker punch would probably get Kyoga. No, no, sucker punch, so Velto gonna go down. Another double edge. These double edges are doing so much damage, really helping everything out. Like when Coco comes onto the field. Uh, so the Velto going down. Just Great. Um, the problem is Salamence is in extreme speed range now, which isn't ideal. Uh, and Dendonir coming back on. Okay. Well, that is gonna that is gonna threaten our Kyogre. But we could just switch into Groudon to be honest. Um, I'll go for another double edge into the the Rayquaza. Actually, yeah, because we've been we've been snarled, so I'll switch into Groudon. It's likely we take an extreme speed to Salamence here. But there's nothing really in the back that I want to switch in on. Um, but we just see the forfeit. So, good game to my opponent. Um, it's a shame we didn't get to see what the Dendene did. I'm sad about that. I am sad about it. But I'm still curious to see what I was, what I was doing there. It'd be good to start. I'm probably going to, after the episode, have a little look at Dendene. See what its move pool is. Check it out. And see what uh, it's all about. But... We will continue. Oh, man. My head. My head is banging. Banging, man. And I shouldn't complain. I really shouldn't complain because I am one of those people that doesn't like to take paracetamols or any sort of pain relief when I don't need to. And you probably would argue, you need to because you've got a headache. But I just... Uh, I don't know. I've got like a, a little thing issue going on with it, and I don't know why. But anyway, that's another conversation for another time. We've got mail up next, so we'll get into team preview and see what we've got. We've got Rayquaza, Tornadus, Kyogre, Cresselia, Incineroar, and Ferrothorn. Uh, straight away, I'm kind of thinking that Incineroar is going to be so important for us here, especially with the Z move uh, for that Cresselia, the Intimidate as well. For the Rayquaza, super important, and then obviously for the Ferrothorn. Um, I really like Groudon in this match as well, as much as it is like it finds it so difficult to perform well in this match. Um, the problem is the uh, Tornadus with the the Tailwind. You've got Trick Room Tailwind, so it's it's a bit messy. This team's quite well put together, to be honest. So it's not going to be the easiest to deal with. Um, 
Right, let's think. What are we going to do? What's our game plan here? Good match, Tailwinds, for sure. Salamence just doesn't like Cresselia, though, so I'm kind of more inclined to lead with Coco. Um, Coco stacks or Coco Incineroar. Um, Groudon. Do we bring. I'm not even going to bring Speed Control, I'm just going to bring Kyogre. Yeah. At least now we've got like both Agile Primals. We've got kind of the versatility to switch in on most things that my opponent's going to be doing. Um, and we really want to try and bait the Rayquaza into Mega Evolving. So it's got the Delta Stream activated. Uh, so we can try and overwrite that with our Desolate Land. That's the, the, the idea here. Uh, we are going to see Kyogre and Cresselia come out for my opponent. I wonder if we see a Trick Room set up. Um, well, we do have the Z move. I wonder if we could just Thunderbolt and. Oh, is Kyogre going to protect though? That's the big question. Because we could go for. Mm, we could go for the Z move into the Cresselia. I don't know if it's worth doing right now though. Um, and will we get the Cresselia? That's the other thing. I don't know if we will. Like, a Thunder will definitely get the Kyogre. I think a Life Orb Thunder will get it. I'm pretty sure it will. And we could just fake out the Cresselia just to see what my opponent's going to do this first turn rather than, like, dive in with a Z move. So, that's what we'll lock into. Uh, Cresselia going to switch out. And then Cinero going to come in. Are we going to just see my opponent protect the Kyogre here? I'd imagine that's probably what we'll see. So it's good that we didn't burn our Z-move here. No protect from the Kyogre though, which is crazy. There's this life orb. And, oh, it just survives. We're going to see an Origin Pulse? Yeah. Oh, we might lose Incineroar here. We might lose both, to be honest. Oh, jeez. Jeez! <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, that's that's the game, pretty much. I don't know if we'll be able to do much from here. Um, this gets very, very tough very quickly. So we know Cresselia's in the back. Um, and probably the Rayquaza. Our opponent's got Fake Out active now. Man. That Kyogre taking that. I mean, that like goes to show, like if you're confident with your uh, your calcs as well, with your Pokemon, then it's like it, it, that that sort of turn is so easy for you because you know whatever's coming out, other than a Gigavolt, you're going to be able to take. Uh, all right. Well, we get the sun up. Uh, I want to say that the I'm going to have to ice beam the Kyogre. Oh, it's just so... I just feel like the Rayquaza comes in here, though. That's the thing. Um, the safest play all round is just Ice Beam in the Kyogre, though. Um, and just protecting Groudon. Oh, Kyogre going to switch out. Cresselia going to come in? Mm-hmm. Okay. What are we going to see? You, might, you have to fake out the Groudon, I think, if you're in Cineral. Yeah. Kyogre not really putting on very much pressure right now. Um, I feel like I could just sword stance. <sighs> An ice beam, the incineral. Because I feel like the incineral might go out. It could go out. Or we could just protect the Kyogre. I just want to put... I just want to get Groudon a bit more threatening. So... Um, the reason for protecting Kyogre here is to kind of try and deny the U-turn onto that slot. Although the Incineroar might feel really pressured, so it might just hard switch into Kyogre. Which, it's not the worst thing in the world, to be honest, because if an Icy Wind comes out, it still means that our Kyogre is potentially going to be faster than my opponent's. Um, if that is what the play that they go for, uh, there's Icy Wind. Okay. Well, Groudon's slower than anything anyway, so it doesn't really make too much difference there. 
Um, so we get the sword stance up. Yep. And a snarl coming out. Okay. Which does make things a little bit more difficult. Now the question is, do we fire punch the Cresselia? Um, or do we see the hard switch? I think we just cover our bases and go fire punch into Cress. And then if the Kyogre does come in on that Incineroar slot for the hard switch, we'll pick up the knockout with an ice beam there. <sighs> okay, well we're not going to see that. Probably going to take an icy wind as well. But it does mean that we're going to get a fire punch off. Well, potentially not as well, because we could see a U-turn now from the Incineroar. Uh, that would get the rain up and then completely protect my opponent. No, I just see another Snarl. Kyogre to Void, so that's helpful. Groudon taking a bit more chip, which isn't useful, but we'll get a Fire Punch into this Cresselia. And plus two in the sun does take it down, so that is very helpful for us. Right. What comes in? Is it going to be the Ray or is it going to be the Kyogre? If it's a Kyogre. And we do get the rain back up. Be interesting. They might not have brought the Ray. It is the Kyogre. Uh, well, I mean, we just. We can protect Groud on this turn and just go for a water spout or an origin, like an origin pulse would be the best I think here because then it guarantees oh we don't have it though we're not greedy um, yeah let's go water spout and just protect because once a Kyogre's gone and if the ray isn't in the back then oh uh, yeah my opponent gone for the protect on the protect which makes a lot of sense I guess we'll find out what my opponent's last Pokemon is. We're going to need a double protector this next turn because we, yeah, and we're taking a snarl as well. The Icy Wind's really helping my opponent out so much here. We might not even take the Incineroar down. It's all going to come down to whether or not we can take, we can get a double protect pretty much. Yeah, because the Incineroar takes that just above berry range as well, so that's good. Electric Terrain disappearing. Yeah, it's, it's all about... Double protect, double protect, and we need. Come on, Groudon, you can do it. You can do it, Groudon. Doesn't even miss. Ah, okay. We're gonna take another snarl in the process, and it's probably Ferrothorn in the back. Now, no, one, like, I would have thought we were maybe seeing Ray come in before now, but if it is little old Ferrothorn, then we're screwed. Uh, water spout, it should take both down, should. Oh, it doesn't even get the incineral, man. Is that a salt vest? Quite possibly is, but it could be berry as well. No, it's a salt vest. That's Z move. It's a salt vest. No Z move, incineral, run snarl. And it is Rayquaza, okay. Uh, yeah, the game's done now. So, very good game to my opponent. Uh, the protect on the protect was obviously the clincher there for them, um, but we're going to get Dragon Ascended, and that is going to be game, but we've still got time for at least one more game in today's episode, so not the end of the world. Requires a Mega Evolving, and uh, we'll have the inevitable Dragon Ascent there. Uh, we needed to... Uh, the, after that first turn, though, it was always going to be difficult. I think we didn't do too bad, kind of bring it back uh, as much as we did. The Kyogre protecting now. Uh, the, the Kyogre going for the Origin Pulse and um, taking down both our Pokemon turn one. It's so difficult to kind of come back from. So, in life, all Bray there. So, very good game to my opponent. Um, yeah, you just don't think to fake out the Kyogre because Kyogre Cresselia, it's the mind game, isn't it? You think, well, in this position, your Kyogre is so threatened. So, I'm like the Kyogre's. Coco's covering that pretty well, so you think you're gonna protect that you're gonna get an icy wind off or you're gonna set a trick room up That would make the most sense and I think being experienced with the team it, it showed in my opponent's play there um, You know and uh, especially the double protect 
uh, on our protect, not the double protect, but the protect on our protect um, should. The experience with my opponent's team, knowing what opponents usually will do against that sort of, in that situation against that team. So, a good example of being very, very comfortable with a team and how, how it can uh, it can nab you and steal you victories. Um, and uh, obviously, a very well built team as well. So, um, nice game for us to have in the middle of the episode. But we'll have one more. We'll search for our next opponent. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long and um, we can get into it. And I believe today there is going to be some Sword and Shield news. Or as I read earlier, which is going to be exciting, more Sword and Shield news. It's get, ramping up the uh, the excitement for this game. I can't wait for it. And um, I do need to do some content on it, covering it, discussing stuff about it, which I promised to do so long ago, but I've just never had the time to like, get around to doing it. So um, I will be starting to do some in the coming weeks for sure, uh, when I'm just trying to work out when I've got time to, to dump it in. And maybe we take away some showdown episodes that we've been doing in place of it and do the, the sword and shield stuff uh, in place of it there so that might be quite nice but let me know your thoughts if you'd like to see some some coverage of that as we're going up to the to the release of the game got our next opponent uh, running a gollus bot so that's kind of cool so we've got incineroar chrysalia tepafini mobile and duskman necrozma the only restricted pokemon on the team which is probably I don't know if it's ultra really. It doesn't really fit with the team very well, does it? Um, Groudon just absolutely destroys this team though. If it's not ultra Necrozma, or at least you got to think that anyway. Um, I'm going to bring Incineroar. Uh, what's going to be a good lead with Incineroar here? Um, probably Coco. Groudon in the back. My opponent's definitely going for Trick Room for sure. Um, What's our last one going to be? Probably Kyogre. I think we don't need to really rely on speed control here. I think my opponent is going to have to utilize it to get their restricted one restricted going. I think so, yeah. We'll go for that. And see what we can do against this last one today. Oh, man. I need, I need like a head massage. I wish I had like a masseur just standing behind me now. Just give me a nice rub. <laughs> if you know any, send me their number. Okay. This guy got like the the most yellow eyes. Reminds me of like Aquaman. Maybe he is Aquaman. Or the son of Aquaman. Who knows? Okay, so we're gonna see Gollis Bod and uh Mowile come out for my opponent. I'm probably not even pronouncing that right. And I'm gonna put it down to my nasalness. That's that's always the excuse. Um First impression is obviously going to be a pain to deal with. The Intimidate here is really useful though from Incineroar, the fake out we've got access to. So we can go for the fake out into um, Chaos Bod and I think just a Vault Switch out into the Mowile. We might just see a Protect there. Um, who knows? Well, the Chaos Bod is going to be feeling a bit threatened. More well just protecting, so a bit of a dead turn here I think, as we're going to see uh, the fake out just stop this on this board. Uh, now the next turn, I mean we can just go for a Flare Blitz and a Volt Switch into the Gollus board to be honest, because um, Flare Blitz in the sun will definitely get them a while. And we'll be able to Volt Switch on the Gollus board if it doesn't protect of course. If it protects here, it kind of scuppers our little plan, but plan is to try and get Groudon onto the field, so we'll boost the Flare Blitz. Because we are intimidated, so I don't think unintimidated, if Mowell does stay in and doesn't Mega Evolve, it will go down. Oh man, my nose, I feel like I'm getting more nasally as this episode's going on. I apologise, I'm so sorry, but I just need to get like, I've got to get this episode done for tomorrow. Uh, otherwise it'll be nothing and we can't have that can we we can't have that on the channel so we're gonna see Cresselia hit the field uh, no protect from the, the spot it's probably gone for a liquidation oh it doesn't even s stick around okay I didn't expect that to take it down I guess we are life orb so um, yeah do we get ground on in just yet mm, yeah we'll boost this flare blitz on the Cresselia like the additional damage is nice and then even a minus two if the mobile comes in 
Z move should be enough to get the, the crest, you would imagine. You kind of put off the Moal coming back in as well in front of a crowd on. Because even if the trick room goes up, there's not really much you can do against it. Foul play, it is an option of course. So can't discount that. Uh, we'll get this flare blitz in, and like I say, this should be do doing some nice damage. Wow, doing nothing. Doing nothing. Minus one <laughs> in the sun. Cresselia is a tank. And that's a Pokemon a lot of you have been shouting for, uh, for going into the, the following episodes uh, with this team, is placing Cresselia in the team. And it's probably something that we'll introduce next week, I think, on the channel. Um, the only reason I chose Stack Attack, I probably said this earlier in the week, is because just the, the offensive pressure that it puts on things like Stack, uh, Xerneas and, and, and other Pokemon like Eveltal that may give us a bit of a harder time. Um, but Cresselia sh definitely is a very good Pokemon still in this format. I mean, we saw in the last game how good its support option can be. It can take so many attacks and just getting those vital Icy Winds off is, is so imperative for it. Um, and I think probably Icy Wind support is the way to play Cresselia. Maybe not Trick Room, um, but I could be wrong. I I like to try both, to be honest. We're going to see them a while come back onto the field. Uh, do we go for... I don't know if we go for the, um, the Z-move yet. Uh, I mean, why not? Why not? We'll just go for it. We're not going to take Cresselia down, but we'll get some decent damage onto it. And we'll go for a Precipice Blades as well. We could have doubled into the Crass here with a Fire Punch. The more well going Protect. We might try and see a, a Trick Room try to be set up here. But I just I feel like it's so difficult for my opponent to um, deal with the, the, the Groudon. I feel like the Groudon is a really tough matchup for it. So we will see the Zoom from Incineroar. Uh, he'll be launching himself into the ring. No! Oh! I've got the wrong Z move. The Z crystal on it. Ah, oh, I'm so dumb. So I can't believe it. And you know what? I read a comment saying, look at Incineroar Z move item. And whoever you were, thank you for that. And I'm sorry I didn't look at it. But we will look at it for tomorrow's episode. I promise. Black Hole Eclipse. I wanted to see him in the ring like John Cena. But we're not going to get that. Okay, so there's a the trick room. Like I said, doesn't I don't think it really helps out my opponent too much. Uh, will you turn out onto the Cresselia? We'll go for a Fire Punch into the Morwell, because we're only minus one at the minute. Uh, Precipice Blades probably won't pick up the knockout, whereas Fire Punch should have a good chance to. We may lose Incineroar here. Um, because a player rough, I know, unintimidated, does take Incineroar down. Helping hand, here we go. If it's helping hand foul play, we're in a bit of trouble. Sucker punch, okay. It does decent damage. I mean, Incineroar's doing nothing. It's so weak. We need a more offensive Incineroar. Uh, we can't bring in Kyogre, of course. Otherwise, it would be a dead turn. Uh, so we will just bring in Coco uh, and get this fire punch off into Moel, which should yeah, be enough to pick up the knockout there. And you would imagine that it's Duskmane in the back. It's my opponent's last Pokemon. Yeah. Big old Necrozma. I don't know if it's Ultra, but we'll keep it. we'll keep Coco around just in case it is. You've got to worry about Earth Power as well. Earth Power is definitely a threat on um, I'm just going to protect Groudon here, just to scout out if it is Earth Power. We could be kicking ourselves a bit if we see the Cresselia reverse the dimensions um, and Ultra Necrozma pop up, but I still think we've got enough to deal with what's left on the field with Coco and Kyogre in the back. So, Groudon I'm going to protect. Uh, right, Ally Switch. Ooh. I mean... I get it for the fire punch, but you're not really helping against um, precipice blades. Okay, so and with Incineroar, I mean we can just target either slot with Darkest Lariat. I'm gonna go for the Cresselia. 
and I'm just gonna go for a press with blades and if we see an ally switch come out it doesn't really matter I mean if we see another ally switch it'd be fine because then we get the precipice blades and the dark slurry into the cross mine it goes down and crest is just left by itself so we'll see what my opponent decides to go for and of course I'm going to protect okay and this should take the Cresselia down thankfully we are slower than it unintimidated doing the biz and now we can just double up into the Necrozma and that should be game so precipice blades and you're right everyone I'm probably cursing us now but we haven't had a precipice blades miss and I don't think we're gonna start now so we'll dock us lariat and we'll go for the the big old blades to finish this one up and see hopefully my opponent lets us finish this turn I'm hoping they do Come on, let us let us just get this turn. Because we want to see the Precipice Blades hit once again. It is Ultra Necrozma. Okay. Like I say, I still think it doesn't really matter too much now. Because of what we've got in the back. Um, and four against one is always going to be such a difficult task for any, any one Pokemon. Dox Lariat and the Precipice Blades. Groudon! This is the good Groudon, hitting its blades. I'll have to remember this when I go to uh, PCs and MSSs in the coming weeks. Take this Groudon, because it doesn't miss. So this is the good the good boy. But good game to my opponent. We pick up a, a win. So two wins, one loss today. Uh, we know why we lost the second game. That first turn there was just so devastating for us. Uh, made it very difficult to come back. But I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope uh, my illness hasn't been too distracting and too graining on you guys. But uh, hopefully I'll be better soon. Um, I'm going to plow on now and get this week's episodes done. So we've not got any downtime. And we've got this content continuing on. Um, but let me know your thoughts for next week. Because I'd like to know if you'd like to see Dual Primals carried on. And we just tweak everything. That was my kind of idea. So we'll have probably a, a completely different looking team going into next week with dual primals we'll take on board everything that we've learned this week and um, but i'd love to hear your thoughts on it uh, have a great rest of your day and i will see you all for the next one so until then take care and bye bye